Joining us now to break down the races and look ahead to November is Boris Epstein, a strategic advisor for coalitions for the 2020 Trump campaign. Boris, looking at last night, it seems as of right now, of course, we're still waiting on some results, that on the Democratic side of the ticket, progressives did have a pretty big night. We're still waiting on Amy McGrath. Uh, that's a big race that the establishment was behind. But big picture, what does this tell you about the direction of the Democratic Party? They're going far to the left, Alice. Good to be with you, as always. They're going far to the left. There's no doubt about it. The old line Democratic Party is in shambles. Elliot Engel was a representation of that. Unfortunately for Democrats, the far left is taking over. Elliot Engel, one of the reasons he lost is his support for the state of Israel. His opponent, Jamal Bowman, is anti-Israel, as is AOC, as is Bernie Sanders, as is Elizabeth Warren. So the new Democratic Party is extreme left, it is anti-Israel, and it's pro-chaos. And it's been developing a lot over the past couple of years. I mean, we, could, we don't have to go that far back. A lot of Democrats back in the day probably wouldn't be Democrats nowadays. They'd be too conservative, if you were, or I'll use the word moderate. But if the Democratic Party is moving to the more progressive wing, what is the Republican Party doing right now? Because I feel like it's also changing, but it doesn't have the same type of catchy name as progressive versus moderate. Well, the Democrats can have the catchy name. We will have the greater part of the political spectrum hmm. because Donald Trump is united within his own movement, the old line conservatives, the populists, those members of unions in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Ohio. And now a lot of the moderate Democrats are going to be coming to us as well because guess what? They don't like looting. They don't like rioting. And they do like for America to be the strongest country in the world. They're against chaos, so they'll be backing Donald Trump. And that was a big concern, too, during the primary race when Bernie Sanders for a short time was in the lead. A lot of people thought that he would completely alienate some of the uh, people more in the suburbs who helped Democrats actually take back the House in 2018. And they fear that if they're painted as being too progressive, too radical, if you will, that those people will go back to the Trump uh, side or the Republican side or maybe just not come out for Joe Biden. But when we're talking about the development of the party, I think it's also important to bring up the change that Trump has brought with, President Trump has brought with him. And we're seeing right now kind of comparing that to the old school conservatism, that being John Bolton. I mean, John Bolton is out right now. I think he's kind of understanding that his whole ideology is no more. I mean, he had his last attempt in this White House, the Trump campaign and the president himself didn't do a, wasn't on board with what John Bolton was doing. Do you think that kind of demonstrates the transition of the Republican Party? I think John Bolton is really an outlier. Mm -hmm. jo even George W. Bush has criticized John Bolton. John Bolton is somebody who's in the John Bolton party. He did get another shot in this White House after being a failed hawk, a failed warmonger throughout his career. President Trump gave him another shot because he was interested in opposing ideas. Right. But Bolton promised that in the end, he would back the Trump agenda, the Trump doctrine of non-intervention of America first. Bolton didn't do that. He pushed his own hawk agenda while he was at the White House and apparently spent much of his time preparing to make money off this book. Yeah, and I think that's a problem, too, that a lot of people are having is that when Bolton could have been doing things to help further U.S. interests, it appears as if he was taking down notes and doing other things preparing for this book that he's talking about. And we could talk about it if you're a Republican, you're mad at him for that. If you're a Democrat, you're mad that he didn't bring any of this up during the impeachment stuff. John Bolton is not a popular guy. And right now it seems like he's having his moment a little bit. He's making his media tours. Is this something that the American people will even care about come November? No. The only people who care about John Bolton right now is much of the mainstream media. The same mainstream media which demonized him for decades. He was one of their worst people. They really couldn't stand him. But now, because Bolton is attacking Donald Trump, much of the mainstream media with their Trump derangement syndrome is making him some beacon of truth that is absolute nonsense. The American people don't care about that. The American people care about the rocket ship economic recovery we're experiencing, the strong national security we have thanks to Donald Trump, the strong trade deals we have thanks to Donald Trump, and continuing that for four more years. That's why President Trump will win on November 3rd. And when we get to November, I mean, over the past couple of weeks, it seemed like coronavirus would be the big issue in the news. Now it seems like it'll be police reforms or some sort of race relation type issue. Do you think those will be the issues on people's minds when they vote November? Or do you think it'll once again be back to those dinner table type of conversations, that being national security and that being the economy, money in their pockets? I think overwhelmingly it will be the economy, it will be prosperity, and it will be security, including security from China, which is very much involved in the coronavirus issue. This plague came to us from China. 
Biden, Beijing Biden, as we like to call him, has never stood up to China in his over 40 years in politics. President Trump has stood up to China. He's been very tough on China, including with the tariffs that we all know about and the phase one China trade deal. So the contrast here is clear. Do the American people want Beijing Biden or do they want Donald Trump, who's standing up for America? No question, they want Trump. And even before the coronavirus hit the shores of the U.S. too, the American people wanted accountability from China, especially in areas like the Midwest, especially among our farmers. They saw that they were being disenfranchised because of China, because of the practices there, that they were no longer competitive in this market. So even before that, the American people did want accountability from China. Now we see coronavirus and polls show that I think it's something like 73 percent of Americans want there to be stronger accountability against China. And President Trump has shown that he's willing to do that. I think the burden is now on the Biden campaign to see if they can even match that. Boris Epstein, always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for coming on tonight.